Three Knots Engineering, I'm Alan. Today I'm making a drawbar for the Boxford lathe and I'm starting off with the Hemingway drawbar kit which is made for a Mythford lathe and modifying it to fit the Boxford. The Boxford is based on a South Bend lathe so anybody with a South Bend, Boxford or all the other derivatives should be able to modify this to fit their lathe. It comes in a kit form from Hemingway and I've left a link at the beginning of the video so you can go onto the website to have a look. So let's go into the workshop and see how we make it. What you get in the kit, you get a set of drawings, sheet with instructions, steel bar for the actual draw bar, another piece of steel for the spacers and a cast iron handle. So we'll have a look at the Boxford to see how this draw bar can fit. Uh, remember it's made for a Myford but I'm modifying it for a Boxford. On the inside of the gearbox door you can see there's a cast part coming out with a hole in and that goes over the end of the spindle here and the reason for that is any swarf that comes through here instead of going into the gears will come out at the back so normally the drawbar would be coming out the spindle here and I've had a nut on the end here that's clamps it to the spindle but on this Hemingway kit the drawbar has a handle which goes onto the end of the spindle for a Myford but obviously if you do that on the Boxford you could use it like that but this door is interlocked to the motor so as soon as I open this door it cuts the power to the motor and that's a safety device so I don't want to disconnect that so what I'm going to do is make everything as the drawing says for the Myford and then just put an extension piece in there to bring this out a couple of inches so it will be on the outside of the gearbox. I've held the handle in a four jaw chuck and I've got this diameter running as true as I can get it but you can see it's a rough finish, it's a rough face, it's only cast so there's a draft angles on these. This is tapered and you can see this side. It's got a taper on so it's only gripping on the outer edge. So I don't want to do too much work like that until I've faced this off and got a centre to support it. Because if I give it a hard cut or a deep cut on this outside it could just move. So I've got that running within that about 10, 12 thou. So now I'll face the end and centre drill. Push out any swarf. So I want to turn this diameter down uh, to match the spindle outside diameter. Let's clean the face up, now I'll carry on working on the diameter. I 
I've changed my truck for the three jaw. I'm holding on the part I've just turned, and now I'm going to true up this and the face. So I've just got that running to a couple of tenths. Okay, I've turned the OD, face the front, and now I just want to take the sharp edges off. Rather than have a flat face, I've just put a recess in it to make it just look pretty. So that's that done. Put this back in my three jaw chuck. That's because I didn't really want to risk turning and drilling and tapping this hole on the end while it was still held on a draft angle so all this is running true now I need to turn down the end to match the bore on the headstock About five there to come off. Just take the sharp corners off. So this diameter will fit inside the spindle and this diameter is the same as the outside of the spindle. Now drilling the tapping hole 38 BSF. I'm just drilling a counter bore three eighths. So that's finished now, except for drilling and tapping M5 for a grub screw. So I'll just put a recess there just to make it look nice. But the next job is to put the semicircles around the handle. Now it says on the instructions you could use a rotary table or a dividing head. I think if you've got a digital readout you could use that. So I'll use my digital readouts to produce the semicircles on the outside. Before I just start to cut I want to try it first to make sure I've got everything right. Select a piece of paper So that will be the centre, pushing the tool into the paper to make a cross on the bottom. So we start off by zeroing your X, Y and Z and making sure that your machine is set to the centre of the pitch circle. And we select this symbol here, which is pitch circle with holes round. And the first thing it asks is what is the radius of the pitch circle? I've already entered it. You'd, at this point, you'd enter the number. I've already put the number in 1.375. Then you press down button for the next question, which is the starting angle. And I want to start at zero. That's so already there. Press the down button for the next question. The end angle, well that can be the same as the start, so accept that, press down button. The hole number, now we want 12 holes. So I've entered 12 and press down. This is the direction, when the start angle and the end angle are equal, you don't need to put anything. So that's telling me now to move my machine so this reads zero zero 
and that is hole number one. So I'll move the table until you come to zero on your reading. It's about there. Then I'll bring down the tool, just touch the paper so it makes a mark. Now I press it down. It says hole number two. We've changed these to zero zero by moving the machine table. I'm going to bring that down. That would be my second hole. Press the down arrow again and carry on doing that for hole four, five, six up to twelve. We'll be there. Now you can check that then with your part. part should fit just in the center and all of all the center should be around the outside don't forget you're not going the full half inch deep we're only just taking a small semicircle out of each one so that's saying mate I've got the right pitch circle I've zeroed my tool in the middle now I'll press the pitch circle then move to the first position Is there. So now I need to go down and cut away that's the first one so now I move to the second hole radius the second radius Move to the next one. That's the handle finished. Now I'll come to the screw cutting part and as this is a metric lathe I've had to add the gear conversion to convert the metric into imperial which is this big gear and we're cutting a half inch BSW thread which is 12 teeth per inch using this square up against my thread cutting tool just to make sure it's square to the the bar that I'm turning. I've put an undercut using my parting off tool just at the end here. I'll just take a cut along there just to see that it is 12 teeth per inch. So I'll pull the tool off, reverse it Doesn't look far out, so I'll cut a few threads and see. I need to go about fifty thou deep. nearly right to the end it could be the undercut at the end wants a bit more off so I'll do that next I'm not going to take any more off that thread just put my parting off tool back on I'm just taking off just enough to get rid of the, the tool mark just clean that up
chamfer on the stove. Yes, that was it. It was just a thread root. I've checked the overall length that I need and cut the bar to length. Now I'm just threading the other end of the bar. I've changed over and put my parting tool in and I'm just doing a undercut there, depth of the thread, just about 32 thou. Now this is the finished draw bar. In the handle is a grub screw that holds the bar in position. And on the thread I've filed a flat so the grub screw can hold the bar. I've made two spacers that just slide on the bar and they'll be lock tighted in position. And this thread holds my collet holder in the end of the spindle. If you're making this for a Boxford lathe, you need to make this spacer from a one inch diameter piece of steel which is not included in the kit. Just copy this diameter onto your spacer on this end and on the other end make the bore exactly the same so this will fit over the end of your handle. So let's see how it works. Fit your collet holder. Feed the bar through. This is the adapter that I fitted. If you're fitting it to a Myford you won't need this. I've already tightened this grub screw up on the flat that I filed on the thread and that screws into the back of the collet that locks up the collet when the machine's running when you need to undo your collet just unscrew this I'm going to tap with the hammer that's ejected the collet holder let's unscrew the collet And withdraw the bar. Oh well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope that was useful, and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.